<laughs> oh gosh. Guys, I've got fish going way out in front of me. I'll try to do a video on how to walk a spook. I gotta catch another one of these guys. Where they at? I'm gonna go right here. There we go. There's one. Guys, this is Gene Jensen from BassResource.com. I'm gonna give you a real quick video on how to walk a spook or a cigar bait or something like that. Maybe I might catch another one, a second one with this. Nope, got both, both hooks in his mouth. But how to walk these baits, how to fish them. Right now I'm fishing a hump. Uh, I'm a boat's in 30 something feet of water. I'm throwing up into 12. And these fish are running bait fish. There's a fish right there. Running bait fish up onto this hump or they're hanging out on the hunt wait, waiting for bait fish to come over top of it. It's in the evening. Not a bad little fish. Um, I'll catch a bunch of them about that size. I just put one in the boat about two and a half pounds a minute ago. But uh, they run these fish up on these humps and then they school on them in the evening, you know, on this lake. Uh, this lake has either blueback herring or threadfin shad in it. And uh, what I'm throwing is I'm throwing a clear Super Spook Junior with well, what used to be a red hook on it. The bass have taken a lot of the red paint off of it. About time to re replace it. But you'll find that the majority of the fish you catch on one that has a red hook in the front, <coughs> they're going to be on that red hook because this is a clear bait. And if you can look at the sky behind me, it's got, we've got cloudy skies. And they can't see it very well. All you can see is the splash in that red hook, and that's what they aim for. So I always give them something to aim at. But uh, walking a spook is, is, uh, is pretty easy. you got to think of it like tapping a drum. Um, it's a little bitty shad. The shad, the bait fish they're hitting on is about, are about this big. But anyway, the uh, it's kind of like tapping a drum. You uh, you don't want to lay the drumstick down on the drum and keep it there. Same thing with the uh, with the spook. When you make a cast out, let me pull around so I can make a pretty decent cast across this hump. At least it give me a chance to catch a fish. Okay, make a cast out. Oh, and they school right in front of me. And it's just tap, 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 tap. And you don't ever want to, let me turn the camera, you don't ever want the, the rod to stay like this. It's more like tap, tap, and you want to take it right back to a slack line. It's, it's a slack line presentation. Now this is driving me nuts. I gotta bring this over because I got fish right here. There you go. Watch this. See if I can catch one. It's right close to the boat. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I don't know why he got off. I don't know why a bass likes a bait that zigzags back and forth. And you know, I, I've never seen a, even an injured bait fish do that. But that's what they like. So you're gonna make a cast out. Hold on, let me catch this fish. Come on, guys. Oh, they're way too close to me. They see the boat. <laughs> Look at this. Right there. Bad cast. And they're all over this hump right here. There's one right there. And you just cast over to them. And you walk in front of it. That's a pretty good fish. I hope it comes up and hits mine. Come on. <laughs> Tells you the bait fish are really small. See how I'm walking it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? All right, I'm going to reel it in and cast over to the middle of them. There was one following it. Slow down my cadence just a little bit. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Hopefully I'll get a swing. This is school fishing for schooling fish, man. I'm telling you. I don't get blown up on that. There's something wrong. <laughs> Look at them. They're after these teeny tiny little thread pin shad. Not even an inch long. And those are all largemouth. Every one of them a largemouth. Ooh, 
you see that? <laughs> I can't believe I got that on video and he's still hooked up. <laughs> oh, he come off! I knew he barely had him. That's a good fish. <laughs> and when you're walking this bait, one thing to remember is it doesn't have to be a direct, it doesn't have to go 90 degrees, you know, 180 degrees each kick. It doesn't have to go do that. It can go like this if you want to do it fast. You can do it fast, you can do it slow, you can stop and pause. There's no set cadence that this has to be. Um, it's uh, It all depends on what the bass want. But um, you just cast it out and it's just like tapping a drum. Tap, tap, tap. But you always go back to that slack line. That's all it is. Oh, I forgot to mention. The kind of rod you want to use for this, uh, the, actually the kind of rod I prefer is a, a medium fast action rod got enough uh, enough flex in the tip where you can get a good positive hook set most of the time and uh, it's got enough flex and enough whip to be able to really cast this thing far. The reason I like the, a, a cigar baiter or a super spook junior is because I can chunk it an absolute mile when I'm chasing these uh, schooling fish. And I'm using 15 pound test um, Iserline triple X. Kind of my standard size. That's what I use most of the time for most of my applications. Uh, you don't want to use a sinking line like a fluorocarbon, um, or you know some people use a braid because braid will float. So I, I know my fishing partner uses a braid and he loves it. Um, I don't. I'm not particularly fond of it yet. Of course, I haven't tried it out very much. All right, let me show you that one more time. All right, let me cast out. And then it's a pop, 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 pop. Start out slow when you're learning. Just start out slow. Pop, 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 pop. And then as you get better, you'll be able to go a lot faster. To be honest with you, I get a lot more strikes with just a regular cadence. Cadence. There has been time, have been times when I'm fishing for spotted bass. For some reason, when I'm on lakes with a lot of spotted bass, they, they want to pop, pop, and then a pause for four or five seconds. And then to go back to walking pop 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 my pause for another four five or six seconds you know and there was the other the other day i was out here fishing this the same thing and they they hit it on the pause but it wasn't it was about a second and a half pause it wasn't much at all but you pop 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 and then pause it and then they'd hit it they wouldn't hit it while it was walking for some reason you know you just gotta you gotta try that stuff out okay let me do it one more time it's pop just like this and of course after you make a cast out there the fish school behind you the way it is. You guys saw that. <laughs> if I can get in the boat before he comes off, boy, they're just barely hitting the tail end of this. But that's about it for walking a spook. It's not too bad. You just gotta watch these treble hooks when these bass get a hold of them. That's it. But like I always say, visit BassResource.com for the answer to your questions about bass fishing. And have a great day.